Welcome, coaches. How are y'all doing today? Hey, I hope you're ready to learn how to run the ultimate screen, Zub, because Coach Dan Casey has a ton of them, broke it down and everything, because we're going to be talking about screens. I'm a huge fan of screens. Coach Casey's a huge fan of screens. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. And, Coach, uh, if they don't know who you are, I'm sorry. They've been hiding out, uh, putting their hands in the sand and everything like that, so I'm not going to waste your time on that. I want to ask you, you went from the ultimate guide to counter, yep. which was incredible, to screens. Why did you choose screens as your next project to work on and not like another run or something? No, for sure. Yeah. I mean, here's here's what I always try and do with, with any football project. Um, I always try to find the thing that I – um, that I love, but feel least prepared to to really dive in on. And I think screen was that for me. I, you know, the way I explain it to to some of my friends as I was explaining the project to them, I was like, you know, I felt really good about what I was doing in the run game, and felt pretty good about what I was doing in the pass game. I definitely had strong opinions. Like I, I had, you know, some things I really wanted to get done. And screen game for me was always kind of like a tag on. Like you know, we'd have some some third and long stuff to kind of bail us out. We get some perimeter screens out there to get get receivers involved or something like that. But when it came to actually teaching screens, it was always kind of like they're like, "Coach, uh, you know, who do we block?" And I'm like, "Most dangerous man." <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of yeah, like, like I I didn't feel like I was teaching it well. And so there were t there were certain teams I had that I felt like ran it ran screen well. And really, the only reason was because we had like a dude that could go that caught the screen and he would just make a bunch of people miss. We get him in, in space and turn it into a punt return. Um, but, but I, I, there were teams that I just like could not get screen going with. And so part of the reason I, I dove in on this project was I really wanted to try and understand some of the underlying principles that made screen successful, regardless of what offensive system you might be in. And so that was, that was kind of the challenge that I, I tried to take on of, you know, regardless of whether you're running the air raid or, you know, even the wing T or, you know, flex bone or different things like that, there's certain screens that fit with that system. And then in addition to that, um, there are certain blocking principles in particular that make the play successful um, no matter, no matter what you're doing. Um, and so coach Mackey, if it's cool with you, I'd love to to share my screen and give people Heck a little yeah. idea of some of the things that I've, I've been working on. Yeah, so if you go ahead, share it, and then I will bring it up. And coaches, while he's doing that, if you have any questions, please put them in the uh, chat. We will answer them. And also, if you get anything out of this, give it a thumbs up. That lets uh, YouTube know that, hey, um, this is some good stuff. So let's let's do it. All right. So if you go up to the – yeah. You, is that there we go. Okay. Yeah. There we so, go. The, the first thing that I want to bring up is, you know, and you can find it in the book, and I, I go in much, much more into detail on it in the book. Um, but really, the, one of the things that I, that I kind of came to realize and understand was that every screen has some foundational principles. And what, what I, what I kind of settled on in, in the study of this was that it, the, the three components of a good screen are point, alley, and peel or push. And coaches may have different terminology for it. Um, but I try to keep it as simple as possible with with these three terms, point alley peel and the blocking triangle, depending whether it's a perimeter screen or, you know, fast screen, slow screen, backfield screen, different things like that. Um, the, the screen always begins with that first block, the point. Um, and then the second block is the alley. And then the third block, if you need it, is peel or push. And depending how you set your screen game up depends on how much blocking support you may need for it. And so, you know, in, in detailing what, in detailing screens, whether it's perimeter fast screens or backfield slow screens or all these different things, if you had these three components and blocked them effectively, but also your receivers were, were moving with the action of the play, the chances are that the screen itself was going to be effective. Um, and so, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump over here and kind of give you a little bit of an example of what I'm talking about. So if we have our blocking triangle out here, um, let's say the screen's going this way. So we have point, uh, we have alley, and then we have peel. So let's say we were running a, let's say we were just running a bubble screen to the trip side number three, for example. So let's just say um, X, Y, and Z. So if we had a corner out here, and then we maybe had um, a strong safety, and then a nickel Sam, okay, alley player. What we would do is we would set the point on the corner. We would run the alley and, and stalk the Sam. 
And then obviously that bubble screen would run away from the peel. So we wouldn't actually have a peel if we run a, th a three by one um, bubble screen. And so basically what I've, what I've been working toward is trying to figure out ways to um, communicate the, the blocking progression, but also communicate to my receiver or whoever's actually going to take the screen, how we want him to him or her to uh, work with that. So let's just say we got um, this bubble screen again. Okay. And we're going to block it um, just in the same way where we set the point, we run the alley and then what, what we're teaching our screen receivers, and I'm going to get into a bunch of film here in a second is we want them to always. And every time we want them to press the point. So the point block is, is what we want to press. We want to press the point. We want to find the alley and we want to trust the peel, press the point, find the alley, trust the peel. So what ends up happening, and I'm showing you bubble screen. It can be a now screen. It can be all sorts of things. We'll, we'll look at a lot of now screens in a second. But what, what I find a lot of receivers do is that they will either look for the alley or try to find a cutback lane mm -hmm. far too often on screens. But when receivers actually trust the, trust the point and, and press the point, that's when everything else opens up. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and dive into a few examples here. Um, sorry if that was a little, uh, a little complicated there, but let's give no, you an not example at all. Of, of a, uh, this is a great example of a now screen. So this is from uh, Oklahoma State, maybe a couple of years ago. Um, I, I believe this is when Sean Gleason was the OC there. Um, Sean did a great job. Uh, he's at Rutgers now. Um, I'm a big fan of what he does offensively. Um, but one of the things that they did is they essentially they they understood the point alley peel concept, right? That they knew that they wanted to to establish this blocking triangle. But a lot of times, like say we were say we had number three here and we just wanted to run a bubble and we point here and we alley here. Like that's that's great, but it's fairly easy for the defense to overcome that blocking scheme, right? All you have to do is either beat the point or beat the alley and and run and then pursue runs to number three. What they do is they're going to start off in a slant alignment with the back and H back opposite. They're going to short motion across and then they're going to zoom or fast motion out with the H back. And what they do is they're actually going to run a now screen from number one. And instead of number two setting the point, what they're going to do is overlap the H who's going to set the point, And number two is going to stalk to the alley. And then number the, the tackle is actually going to end up leaking and become the push. Uh, we call him the push player. If he doesn't peel, he's going to push. Um, but the reason I think this play is so successful, if you if you look a little closer, is the the body type, right? So we got an, a tight end body who's going to end up kicking out the point, okay? And if number two can just get enough interference on the alley and we press the point, we're going to be in pretty good shape. And then some of the run action is going to ho hopefully hold the peel and then maybe we can get a, a backside leak just to give us a little extra support. So again, we... Motion to a stacked alignment here from slant to stack. And then we're fast motioning out. Okay. So now you kind of see how it's getting set up, right? We're going to overlap to the point. We're going to stalk the alley. Overlap the point, stalk the alley. Boom. We get a big kick out on that point person. The alley just runs enough interference and we find the seam. Okay. And you get a really good view of this from the, uh, from the tight copy. And I, I just, I love the way this play gets set up because it's not only thinking about how do we block it, but it's thinking about matchups. Okay. So obviously Oregon state's in, uh, in a tight front alignment. This guy's playing maybe a heavy five. He might get to a four. eye eventually, um, they have a Jack overhang backer. Now, again, if they're going to have an H back aligned here, they can run a lot of wide zone or outside zone to the field. Uh, but what they're going to do instead is they're going to fly this H back motion across. Okay. Now what the what the quarterback can do, and you know, depending how much you trust your guy, if if that overhang defender is going to move out with motion, then you can go ahead and hand the football off because you have you feel good about numbers, especially if you can get a bump out here. You feel pretty good about numbers in the run game. But for the sake of this, let's just call it a straight screen. We're gonna step out of the run scheme, throw this, throw the screen. Now, this is beautiful, right? A lot of receivers, when they catch now screens, want to turn them into tunnel screens. <laughs> yeah. Look who's running here, right? Every time, as soon as the ball touches your hands, you need to press the point. If you don't press the point, it may be a six-yard gain, but it's not going to be a 60-yard gain. And what you'll see is because the body type out here, we, we are going to get a strong kick that's going to end up displacing the corner to the numbers. And so if you press the point, what's going to end up happening is you find numbers hash sideline. 
And that's a pretty good deal for us offensively. And again, number two, he's stalking to the alley. All he has to do is just cut off. It doesn't need to be a blow up block in the alley. Just cut it off, right? So again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna let this run here. Press the point, and you see he just outruns the peel player because of the angle. It's all about angles. I know I'm, I'm sure at times you've heard um, guys like Rich Rodriguez or others talk about um, numbers, angles, and grass. Right? There's ways yep. to create that with the matchup. And again, it's it's very subtle, but the difference is that matchup is when you get a tight end body on a corner. You're, you're actually extending the point. The point is actually going to be wider than you thought. Boom, to the numbers. We, we press the butt of the point, and we find the seam. So, again, it's, it's little things. I, I think, and this is, again, uh, I'm going to pause this. We'll come back to, back to the film here in a second. Um, but I think, um, you know, one of the things that I, I get frustrated with and got frustrated with as a coach was there were times when I was like, screen's just not working. Like we're getting, we're, we're not matching up, right. We're getting beat. Like, you know, no, nobody wants to stalk block in the alley. Like, you know, and, and I would just get away from it. And so instead of thinking about matchups, instead of thinking about um, advantageous angles for my receivers in the blocking game, um, I would just abandon screens. I'd be like, well, at least, okay, at least our guys, can, we can, we can run our run schemes and we can throw our pass schemes. But when I would get, when, when something would go wrong in the screen game, I would abandon it. And that was one of the things that I was really challenging myself on as an offensive coordinator was there are ways to problem solve for this instead of just abandoning it. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of guys I talk to run across similar problems where they're like, man, there will be whole drives, whole halves of football where I won't call a screen because, you know, in the first quarter it didn't work. Uh, yeah. And so I'm just going to get away from it. And so one of the things that I discovered in in this study of screen is that the guys that are running it best aren't necessarily doing anything groundbreaking. They're just giving their players the easiest angles um, and, and really finding advantageous matchups. And so I'll, I'm going to get into a little bit more of, uh, of the film stuff. Cause I think that's probably most interesting for everybody. Um, so while, while you were looking at it, like what you, how much film did you actually look at? Like, if you were just to guesstimate how much film you chopped down and everything, <laughs> were you uh, watching whole games and then chopping them down, or did you yeah. have some help? And someone's like, "Hey, I know you're doing the screen game. Here's all the screens, and you just got screens from everybody." Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit of both. I mean, I obviously have um, some awesome coaches that I lean on for some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, some guys love cut ups. I don't. Um, because sometimes I feel like I lose the flow of the game and the rhythm of the play calling. Everybody has a different perspective. I, I am a rhythm play caller. And so I'm, I'm looking to establish a cadence throughout the game. And so I really like to study, okay, like why did this play come after that play? And why did it come on yeah. second down instead of third down? And, um, what was the situation? What was the momentum? Like, it, it's interesting. I, I don't, I can't remember who told me this, but somebody was telling me back in the, in the Baylor, Art Bryles days, they would film, they would have either an end zone or a wide copy where it would just continuously film the whole game because they were trying to play with tempo. They didn't want to cut the game up into segments because they wanted to see like, and they would literally say, you know, if you're, if you're a receiver and you made a catch, we are, we are charting whether or not you handed the ball to the nearest official to spot it so we could keep going. So it's wow. little, it's little details like that, that I think get lost when we get like stuck in cut up land and don't get me wrong, like it's way easier to just watch a million cutups and, and you get a, a theme for like what makes the play successful. Um, but I, I end up watching a lot of games just because um, I don't know, that's maybe my, more my personality. I just like to I like to see the rhythm of it. Um, well, OK, so this is why I'm asking, like, I know you did a crap ton of them. Have, who were the best teams that ran screens that continued to run them, even though they wouldn't work in the beginning, like you said, because I know a lot of us. When we run, I'm guilty of it. If I run right. two screens and it doesn't get anything, I'm just like, F the screens. Uh, right. I'm not calling right. them again. Right. Uh, this is awful. But I know that in your in your study, you came across teams that if they, they may have ran five screens and it didn't work, but they that coach was like, man, we're still doing this. It's yeah, part of the sure. game plan. For sure. I mean – it's probably like the names probably aren't going to surprise you all that much. I mean, it's, it's the guys you think of in the NFL, right? It's Andy Reed and Sean Payton and, you know, Kyle Shanahan guys that I think do a good job. I actually think Doug Peterson does a really good job. I know he's in the, 
in kind of the Andy Reid world um, coming from Kansas City. I actually think Matt Nagy does a really good job with screens again, an Andy Reid guy. When I actually went back and looked at the the history of it, it's really interesting that um, screen kind of follows these like parallel universes. And Ron, I know you'll you'll appreciate um, some of the run and shoot stuff. Um, yes. But run and shoot, I mean, Tiger Ellison, like perimeter screens, like that's, that is kind of OG, what we think of as kind of the spread sp- screen game. But if you go back even further than that, you end up with like, old 1930s Dutch Meyer TCU stuff. And he was actually running like legitimate screens, like cra- like crazy stuff, like arrow screens and, and like different things like that, that you're like, I didn't know that that would have existed back then. Um, and, and I guess technically the guy that's like first given credit for running the first screen is Ray Flaherty for the Washington Redskins back in 1937. However, I would argue that it was probably Dutch Meyer that ran it at TCU because again, I'm going into probably... No, no, I don't think he gets enough Um, credit. So, so Dutch Meyer coached Sammy Ball. Sammy Ball was drafted by Ray Flaherty for the Redskins. And even though Flaherty gets credit for the screen, I would imagine Sammy Ball was probably learning a lot of those things because he's actually quoted in the Washington Post back in like the 60s or something saying basically he didn't learn shit from his pro coaches. (laughs) He only learned stuff from from Dutch Meyer. So anyway, I kind of went, went down the rabbit hole on that. Um, no, I love it. I love that kind of stuff. Cause it's like, there were these guys that were kind of sticking their neck out way before anyone else was and kind of envisioning a new way to play the game. And the football, it's so hard to trace who did what, because it's, it's an oral history, right? Like it's one of these things yeah. that we get, it gets passed down through clinics and, and maybe you can catch somebody on film. And I think it's a lot easier now to kind of trace, origins but um you know in the college game when i'm looking at like who does screen really well it's another guy that's ended up in the nfl now but like the just the amount of creativity is cliff kingsbury and obviously lincoln riley like everybody loves that and he he kind of pushes the boundaries in terms of some of the downfield screens so whether it's the shallow screens or the arrow screens and i'm probably not probably not going to be able to get to that tonight but um it's all in the book but you know i think um you know there, it, the, the, the biggest thing for me was not like, oh, who has the coolest screens, but whose screens are most congruent with what they're doing on the broader scale offensively. So if they have a plan offensively, um, their screens had to match that. And so that's why I think Sean Payton has so much success because his screens look like everything else he does. And a guy like Kyle Shanahan, same thing, like right off of that wide zone action, you got screens coming every every type of direction. And I think I think the coaches that throw in the one-off screens are probably the ones that don't have much success. The coaches that are consistently matching their screen game to their other schemes. Um, recently, you know, uh, Dan Mullen with Florida has been doing a lot of um, you know uh, tunnel screens off of one-back power action. So he'll either run QB QB power or you know one-back power and throw a, t- a tunnel screen on the backside, and they have a ton of success with that. They've scored a couple times on it I've, so, from what I've seen. And so it's again, but one back power is something they do like they 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 major in it. And so I think it's one of those things where find screens that work off of some of your base stuff, whether it's pass game or run game. The teams that run shallow screen really well. Guess what else they run really well Four verts, shallow, you know? yeah. <laughs> and yeah. shallow and Y cross. And like they they run the stuff that that looks the same as. And so I think that's that's probably the thing that that really stuck out to me the most was you got to make it congruent with what you're already trying to get done offensively. Otherwise it's, it's really easy to sniff out. Um, so yeah, am I, definitely. am I sharing? You are now. Hey, yeah. real quick. We have a couple of questions. Yeah, uh, coaches, sure. thank it. you so much for um, being here. And if you're getting anything from this, please hit that thumbs up because it really helps YouTube algorithm to get this out. So a lot of more people can actually run screens like uh, coach Lee says this may this has me believing in screens again. So <laughs> there you there go. I love it. Coach Kirby as well is, is agreeing with it. We, we've got the, the man, JT O'Sullivan. JT, what's going on, man? I hope you're enjoying your July JT. off. JT is um, another, another guy that's got a great YouTube setup, man. I love, uh, love the QB shit. school. We're, we are all, I mean, we're all, we're all amateurs compared to JT. <laughs> yes. he's, got going on. he's got a Hollywood studio in there, man. <laughs> no. um, Pat wants to know good terminology for teaching. I can see this even translating to the rocket toss from. Flex okay. Do you, yeah. yeah. So, this so is right I, am, I, I am a, I am a very big proponent that 
Um, rocket toss in, in flex bone is no different than bubble screen in the spread offense, man. I agree. But or swing screen. I mean, swing screen, depending depending how you do it. And when you actually and that's another thing about the history. If you read S.C. Gwynn's book about, you know, the perfect pass and, and how mummy he basically took the idea of perimeter screens from I believe it was John Robinson's USC teams that they would run the student body right, student body left sweeps. And it's the same numbers. And you're making people run the same idea with kind of the wishbone stuff, make people run sideline to sideline and tackle. And uh, and I've almost taken that run game philosophy to a lot of my screen game um, and being very strategic and saying a three yard gain is a successful screen if we made yeah. the defensive line run. I'm glad you said that. So what are your thoughts on because you just said three yards? I know a lot of passing coaches. They're like, if we're going to screen, we need five or six yards or we're not calling the screens sure. anymore. Yeah. Do, do you agree with that or do you think they should kind of taper that back a little bit to say three? Because then maybe they wouldn't give up on the screen so much if they're not getting that yardage yeah yeah i mean well again i, I spent a lot of time running counter uh, or writing about counter and i run it a ton with my team which is unbelievable uh, by the yeah, way it, i it, mean it's my my favorite uh, my favorite play it's so it's so much fun um but we don't abandon counter if we get a two-yard gain like it's it's one of those plays that it's really hard to fit and you know i think obviously and we, we can go into more detail about some of this stuff but um screens are hard to fit consistently over the course of a game you know, you may have a team that comes out really well in the first quarter, and I'm probably not going to get a chance to talk about some of the great strategies for defending screen, particularly to perimeter screens that guys like Kirby Smart are doing. Um, but there's there's great ways to do it, and there's great ways to fit screen, and especially early in the game when the defense is fresh, great. Like, they're going to make plays on your screen game. Um, but if you abandon it, um, you're you're losing the kind of the compounding effect of the screen game of making people run, making people tackle in space. And I think the guys that are having a lot of success currently, um, and we'll we'll take a look at a, a clip from Josh Heupel at UCF. You know they're running tempo and they're running boundary screens. It's a handoff, man. Like that that thing's a handoff. That's such a it's a you know I know some coaches will call that like boundary hitch, a gift route or something like that. You can get screens that are similar similar to that where. If you're not completing that ball, like then maybe you should just run single wing um, because you need to be able to run. You need to be able to complete a, uh, a now screen into the boundary or something like that. So it's things like that that I'm just like, it can be easy money if you're if you just treat it like a run play um, or and, and mentally you have to kind of like conceive of it almost as a run play, especially some of these like perimeter screen tags that you may add on to a run game to protect the backside or, or the front side, however you want to want to see it. I love it. All right. Hey, last question before we yep. get into you, because I love seeing uh hold on. That's not the one. Where was it at? Yes. Uh Coach Kirby wants to know, would this work in middle school? So do you think look just for the sake of 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 Kirby, two screens in middle school, what two screens would you run? Uh yeah, I would go I would just keep it simple on the perimeter. Um, and I would run now screens on the perimeter and I would would run swing screens out of the backfield. Um there you go. again, it's it's basically a sweep. And then the now screen is just a way for you to get, uh, get one of your better players, the ball. I think a lot of times when you're playing with younger age groups, you may have a player that is a pretty good receiver, but how high is the completion percentage on that? Um, if you throw a now screen, you're giving that kid a chance to make a play. And I think the misnomer may be that when people think of now screens or, you know, some call coaches call them snap screens or things like that. Um, is, is it doesn't always have to go to number one. I'll show you an example of, of throwing a slot now screen that, that can, I think, be really successful. And you kind of blur the line between tunnel and, and now um, that I think can, it can be really helpful and get, get some good, uh, good blocking out in front as well. Heck, yeah. We'll see that. And also, JT, quit BNS in us, man. You know good and well you got that Hollywood setup that we're all trying to be a part of. That's right. So yeah, hey, bring up the film. Let's let's right, see some more because I freaking I freaking love this stuff. And coaches, again, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, we will get to them and smash that like button, that thumbs smash up. Smash it. All right. Well, let's keep rolling. Um, this is fun. Um, so now this is okay. So I know I mentioned single wing a little bit. This is a few years ago when Baylor played a bowl game basically without a quarterback. Um, greatest game I've seen in a very long time. It, it is unbelievable. If you're a run game aficionado, this is, this is your, your deal. Um, but again, I, I love it because I, I, and again, this is kind of a little off kilter, but it's, it's the, the idea of if you have some sort of wildcat package or direct snap stuff, having an ability to tag a, a screen to it, I think really levels you up. 
Um, and so basically what they're in is they're in Wildcat, tight end wing into the boundary, and they've actually put an extra offensive lineman in here. And they've got extra wide splits out here from the from the number three receiver. And they're just going to run a, a field now screen. And again, the reason they throw this is it's just a pure numbers and leverage read where if that overhang defender is going to step inside the hash like this, he can't really uh, he can't really be screen support. It, it's going to be hard for him to run all the way out here in screen support. So if we're if we're two over two in the in terms of blocking, we feel really good about this. So we'll go set the point and then stalk to alley. So we may have to if this guy flies out here, we may have to take him on and then be one on one out here. But again, what you see when you whenever you go single wing wildcat direct snap anything like that, again you're going to see an extra number. So maybe we have the backside corner here. Uh, we may roll have a extra linebacker in the box, and that safety is probably going to be hunting as well. And so the option, obviously, is to, to run just some sort of outside zone to the tight end wing side. Or if you feel good about the numbers, again, the kid doesn't have to have an amazing arm. He just has to be able to get it to the sideline um, to throw the now screen. And again, I think it, it's just, it gives you a really good picture of setting the point and, and running the alley. And the peel is formationally. Uh, it's taken care of formationally. So if you're going to put a non-quarterback at quarterback, Again, it's probably going to pull that peel player away from the from the screen fit and into the run fit. And if he's going to do that, like let's just take take an easy throw out here. So the danger, obviously, of throwing a now screen to the field is that the ability of that corner to close. And so what we need to do is we need to wall that corner off. It doesn't have to be a dominating block, but we have to basically tell that receiver that your job is to put your body between the corner and and the um, screen receiver. Um, and so that's a really important block. It doesn't have to be a blow up or a kill shot, but you have to have confidence in this guy's lateral movement. Um, a lot of times, like for example, in the Oklahoma state clip, right? We had an over overlap and we just kicked that guy out from an, an H back body. But for a block like this, you need lateral movement skills to be able to cut off the corner. doesn't even do an amazing job, but you can see, I mean, he's almost, he almost kind of looks like a, um, he almost looks like a, um, uh, like a basket, like a basketball player. I'm trying to figure out how to go backwards on this. Sorry guys. Um, but you can, you can see like he's shuffle shuffling to stay in front on this, this point block. So again, it doesn't have to be a kill shot, but watch him shuffle right here. Like just like a basketball player, right? Shuffle to the sideline, shuffle, 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 and just got enough. And then we were able to seal the alley and you see the peel player having to run all the way out here. So again, press the point and then you find the alley and you trust that the formation has taken care of the peel. Do not get involved in the peel. Keep pressing to the sideline. And again, you see it was one block that is the difference in this play. And it doesn't have to be a kill shot. That's what I try to keep reminding coaches and, and my athletes when I talk to them. is like you, you positioning your body between the DB and, and the receiver is all that needs to happen. Shuffle, shuffle, cut off. That's maybe close to a block in the back. But again, this is what I love about this clip. <laughs> the receiver is not letting himself leak back toward the numbers he puts a foot in the ground and he gets vertical that's what needs to happen press the point find the alley get vertical go um and so I, that th it's clips like that that i love to show people because I, I just keep if there's one thing you get out of this it's the uh, the coaching cue press the point if guys aren't pressing the point your screen game is never going to be as as nice as you want it to be it's not that it'll never work but it's not it's going to lack the explosiveness that you want all right so is there something that you did you stumble across a drill or something like that that you can reinforce? Hey, press the point yes. over and over again. Yeah, um, I know that Oklahoma State um, when they run their their screen drill, their millennial Oklahoma drill, basically um, they do a lot of that. And then um, I guess the the biggest thing for me, hold on, I'll jump out of here for a second. Um, the biggest thing for me was was really seeing the way that Georgia was fitting perimeter screens. Is they were trying to prevent you from getting um prevent you from getting to the getting to the point at all so essentially they were trying to run an alley force let me see if i can find this i, I may have it on this computer okay I I and i know you were clowning not clowning but talking about the uh the single wing and we have a question about the single wing from actually jt okay uh he wants to know what's the best screen at a 13 personnel bunch and the team only runs duo pin and pull strong and counter weak and massive play action shot. So if you were to come in and you were like, hey, this single wing team, 13 personnel, wants to run a screen, what would you say the best one is? Um, so bunch, 13 personnel. Um, 
Interesting. Okay, hold on. I think I may have something I like from this. Um, I think this is it. Okay. Is it on the screen? I just shared it. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Look at us. Okay. Yeah, look. <laughs> um, this is what I would run. So instead of running bubble to number three in a bunch, I would run bubble to number one and basically combo to overlap alley to point. So I'd run pin and pull into the boundary, just like Sark and run bubble to number one. So basically what we're doing here is we're saying the first man out, we're comboing alley to point. And so basically he's going to attack kind of most dangerous. Now Ole Miss is not aligned well here, but um, you get the point. So he, he's going to, he's going to actually, he's ended up being the alley player technically because there's not, well, there's not really a force player out here because we ran bubble number one. And then we, he was, so he's, I guess you could say he's setting the point and then he's turning back on the alley because we ran pin and pull into the, um, into the boundary. So I, I just, I think running bubble to number one is really hard to defend. Cause a lot of times um, when you run bubble to number three, teams will press the point in your bunch. Yeah. And so they're going to play at least slightly outside leverage. And so it's just, he's just going to be able to leverage that a lot. Whereas if you, there's games you can play with like overlapping um, your, your H back or excuse me, overlapping. So if you, if they were pressing the point and you basically told um, number, number one to block or sorry, number two of the, like the point of the bunch to block the, the guy pressing him and number three to overlap and just run out the bubble because they're usually not going to play a tight corner to a bunch. I'm not saying they can't, but they usually don't. Um, so again, I just like, I love this pin and pull action. And then we're just going to pull out and throw that screen to number one, bubble screen to number one. I just don't think a lot of people do it. I think it's really no, cool. No, not at all. And I'm, I'm looking at that because that looks amazing. So there you go, JT. There it is. I love right, that you have 13 personnel. We need more of that. Uh, yeah. He says, like it, thanks. Bubble to number one is a nice change up with nub is nasty. Yeah, especially if you can. I mean, if you can effectively run pin and pull or even some like GH counter back into the boundary, um, you can do some really, really fun stuff with that. I did want to show this. So I was talking about the Georgia, like cutting off the, the alley. So the reason I think the point block is so important and why it's so important to press the point is that if teams do a good job aligning to trips and they have an outside overhang defender, I don't, I don't have a cursor here, so I can't really uh, diagram on this, but um, basically watch num watch the um, overhang defender of like the nickel Sam, watch him force the alley. Here it is. Force the alley, cut it off. And then you, your peel player runs to it. Yeah. So instead of, instead of you being able to press the point and find the alley, you are getting turned back in on the alley and you have no peel support, right? Because of, because of the formation, like you just don't have that. Like you're, you're running it to a trip side. If you ran the, so if you were to like swing the, the running back out of the backfield here, you could potentially point alley peel, but they're still cutting off the alley and forcing the alley. And so I'll show you a clip later on of Kansas State where they um, they basically pin the alley and pull cross blocking so that they are able to maintain angles and leverage. And it, it hits really nice, um, but it's the same same exact bubble, but they're not getting cut off. You see, and that's that's a tight end body that should win this matchup, but it's not a great leverage matchup. So he ends up getting forced and that ball gets turned back in and it's, it's a negative, you know, on a play that really shouldn't be a negative if we're out leveraging that. But if your alley player gets forced, you're gonna. It's just tough, right? Like, yeah, good the man. angles aren't and, good. The angles aren't good. And like then that. what's gonna happen is if that's if that's me, I'm not calling. Another you're screen. never calling bubble again. I'm no, no, not at all. <laughs> if we just took a negative three on bubble. Like, forget it, right? And if, so many if anything. Yeah. I'm getting some. I'm getting shit from the head coach talking about <laughs> why did we call that why play on bubble? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right. So I, I'm actually going to see if I can pull up that uh, Kansas State stuff, because I think it's basically going to show you real time the problem solving for this on bubble. OK, mm. so okay. you just saw uh, you ju literally just saw the almost identical formation. I know this is kind of wide bunchy a little bit, um, but again, it's it's three over three trips. And instead of trying to stalk to the alley and point, what they're going to do is they're going to pin the alley and overlap to point and watch like it's such a simple switch but look at the difference it makes because this guy's not reacting any 
like that much slower. I mean, he's going to stand flat footed just enough time for our bubble screen to get leverage. Okay. But it's, it's really not that different than the Tennessee clip. Obviously George has got some, some dudes out there, but watch the overlap. So again, they're kind of pressing the point because it's a little bit of a wide bunch here, but pin pull. Boom. Look at that alley. Press the point, baby. I mean, it's I like so it. nice, right? It, this it. second part of this is not a great, um, not a great look at it because Whoever was filming thought Kansas State was running the ball there for sure. Um, but I, I here's a great look him. at it. <laughs> Love Bill Snyder. Um, the pin and pull, it just it's such an easy fix. And instead of getting a negative three on bubble, you're able to get outside and press the point here. And it's, you know, it's an explosive play. Boom, pin, uh, pin, set the pin the alley, set the point, and, and you're in business. So it's it's little things like that that I think can Again, it's it's nothing groundbreaking. It's just setting up these little adjustments that you can make to make sure that like you're responding to the way the defense is, is aligning to you. If they're going to be outside of number two and you're trying to run bubble to trips, just switch it up, tighten down some alignment, and, and get that little pin and pull. Um, How often, because Nick, I agree, love cross-blocking the bubble to get angles. How often did you see that? while you were breaking this down, like a lot of teams cross blocking on the bubble instead of just straight up stock blocking. Um, a lot of guys do it on now screen. Um, I don't think I have a clip pulled up on this computer, but a lot of guys will, um, will combo the point. So this is something Scott Frost actually does quite a bit. Um, I don't know if he did it as much recently with Nebraska, but when they run um, bubble or now screens, he will combo with either one and two or two and three on the alley player. And so they'll get movement kind of like, you know, run and duo or something like that. Right. You get movement on that first block and come off on the second block. And that kind of stuff worked, worked pretty well. I thought um, now basically the, the times it goes wrong is when, you know, those receivers aren't obviously aren't used to getting hip to hip on those double teams and they're getting split. Yeah. So that's always a danger um, that you face, but here I'll show, I'll show one more um, of the cross blocking. This is into the boundary. Um, and this is from a more recent, uh, more, oh, do I have it? Let me check. Hold on guys. We got it here. So right. I am releasing week one of the screen course tomorrow. It'll be live tomorrow. So if you want all this and much, much more, you can, uh, feel free to, to jump in on hey, that. coaches. But, if you want to look in the description, I have both of coaches, uh, ultimate guides to counter and the uh, screen right there. And seriously, what, what, what are you doing? I mean, the man's a genius. First off, a genius. I, I want, yes, you, we all know. It's your hey, wife. I just, Jeez. I just observe things and uh, report back. I'll, I'll, I want to know real quick before you get into that, the QR yeah, sure. codes, man, was that yes. you or was that your wife? Oh, that was all my wife. She, golly, yeah. give her a, a great high idea. Five. Is that yes? It's a great idea, man. She's 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 a graphic designer, and so all of my, uh, if if anything I'm doing is uh, remotely aesthetically pleasing, it's because she's uh, <laughs> she's helped me out a ton. So I'm I'm super grateful. She's um, she she actually knows quite a bit about screen now after designing a whole book. So uh, <laughs> she's pretty pretty well versed in point alley peel at this point. Uh, heck yeah! So yeah, she's, uh, she's awesome. talking about that. Also, we have a couple of uh, questions. Okay, I actually want a question. Sorry, coach. I just want to go for it. What is the one screen where you were doing your stuff that you went, holy crap, this is freaking amazing. <laughs> I need to install this more. Or why aren't more people running this type of screen? Oh, okay. I got something for you. Heck yeah, man. I got something for you. Jesus, you're like, you're like the operator in the Matrix. You're just like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> just bring it up. I, I've probably watched way too much football. All right, so I mentioned Sean Gleason, um, big fan of him. And there was a guy before him at Princeton. So this is back before he was at Oklahoma State, before he was at Rutgers. Um, There's a guy before him named James Perry, I believe. I think this is the James Perry years at, um, at Princeton. And they had two quarterbacks. I believe one of them's in the NFL now. I don't know if he's a quarterback anymore. He might be like a fullback now. Um, but they would run two quarterback plays a lot. So basically yes. what they would do is they would run – this is really cool. I, I dig this stuff. Okay. So they would run like a, a bubble screen into the boundary. I think it's either a bubble or now on the backside. And they would run outside zone to the field. But this guy here is a quarterback. And this guy's also a quarterback. This guy's a right-handed quarterback. And this guy's a left-handed quarterback. That's the best part of this. And so they're going to basically read the end. If the end sits, they're going to hand off outside zone. 
if the end bends, they're going to pull it and run an extended triple option into the boundary. So if an alley player shows, quarterback's going to throw the bubble screen into the boundary. The best part of this play, though, is they are going to run to the front side, um, basically a most dangerous man. We call it search blocking. So you search block most dangerous, either um, the overhang or the corner, depending on ho who shows up first. And then so it's not really a point necessarily, but it's point to alley. And that's kind of how we describe it, like search point to alley. So they're going to hand off outside zone. And then if if linebackers trigger, he's going to throw the bubble off the handoff. <laughs> It's incredible. Um, so again, backside, they have the bubble screen and then they're going to hand off to the quarterback outside zone and he's going to throw the bubble. It's incredible. Those, those freaking nerds, man, just coming up with some <laughs> I'm telling you, I, 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 I had tweeted like a couple years ago, shoot, when is somebody going to hire away some of these Ivy League coordinators? And then like a couple days later, Sean Gleason got hired by uh, Mike Gundy. And I was, I was like, that was definitely not because of me, but, uh, it was. It was Maybe because Sean, of you. Sean might have made some money. I don't know. <laughs> I sure. I certainly haven't made much money coaching. So, uh, but yeah. So he. I mean, it's stuff like this that again. If you go back to like the blocking triangle rules, basically what this does is if you run outside zone, you're automatically ruining a screen fit because that's run action all the way, especially mm -hmm. for safeties and especially for overhang defenders. Right? Like he's not going to fit a fit bubble. Um, and so basically what you're doing is you're saying, I only actually need one blocker out here and he can basically be variable search and he lights this kid up. Um, yeah, he but he can, he can search, um, alley to point and we basically have the matchup we want. Um, now again, this play is probably only going to work against teams that play super off coverage like this. <laughs> um, but, uh, but again, it's, it's little things like this that, you know, you can just as easily run screen and go or something like that. I, one of the things that I, that I try and talk about a lot when I, whenever I talk to people about screen game is having all the horizontal components of your screen game is great. But if you don't have some sort of vertical threat, eventually people are going to take advantage of you. Um, you, you need vertical threats, which is why I think screen and go is, is so important um, to have in your, in your arsenal. Um, and it has to be off of screens you actually run, um, but you can make a, you can make a killing off screen and go. It's such an easy, such an easy win. Do you have a, a sorry? I, I find that I have a difficult problem calling screen and goes, but yeah, is, it, is there a magical number that you're like, okay, for every four normal screens, I got to call a go, or is it are you looking for something? And when you see this one thing, the very next time you call a screen, you're calling the screen and go. What's your thought process? So I basically think of off of fast screens, I think of screen and go as the play action off of an uh, off of a fast screen. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So instead of thinking of screen and go as a trick play, it's not, it's a, it is a play action pass. If that makes sense. That does. Um, and so basically like what we'll do is like, say we run, uh, all right, let's say we run like a now screen. So normally he would set the point and he would run the alley. What we may do is set the point and then like run a little bender and then he would run the alley and then run post wheel. And what, what you'll see, so one of the best screen teams, I, sh I should have mentioned this at the beginning, one of the best screen teams I think in college football is Wake Forest. Um, they do a great job. Um, Warren, I, I always mispronounce his name. I think it's Warren Ruggiero um, is a phenomenal coach and does a great job. But what they basically do is they'll run screen and go. And since a lot of times what happens is like, if you have, like, let's just say we had, um, uh, overhang and a safety. What teams do on screen and go is they bail. Like if you if you, if you're sensing as a secondary player um, on screen and go, you bail. And so what they do is they run side adjustments off screen and go. So they'll run a wheel comeback. And a lot of times, like the, okay, yeah, you're not getting a 30 yard gain here, but you're you're you know 15 to 20, right? And like take that all day. Because they, because they don't treat screen and go as like a trick play, they just treat it like play action, they can get into some really interesting route concepts. And they do a lot of quads stuff. So like they may do, um, they may throw the running back in here and run a bubble or something like that. TCU used to do it a few years back with like Doug Meacham and stuff like that. And so when you get in quads alignments, you can get into like legitimate four verts off of like a, a pump screen action. So anyway, that that's how I like to think of it. I think that like, clears things up for me a little bit personally because when i'm mentally thinking like screen and go okay we have to hit this it has to be an explosive or it's not a good play 
Yeah. That's when I like kind of save those screen and goes up. And I always tell people like part of the reason you're running screen and go is so that it can keep screen working the rest of the game um, or the rest of the season, like put it on film early and often um, because then teams aren't going to fit your perimeter screens nearly in the same way. So I know I've been talking a lot about perimeter screens. Obviously the backfield screens are great too, but um, in terms of like, if we're thinking spread offense, if we're thinking kind of air raid, air raid type stuff, you're going to see it probably more perimeter screens because those are like token run plays almost. Yeah. Uh, Another play that that really shouldn't be thought of as a trick play is some of the like polecat stuff that Gus Malzahn did. Um, and the reason I like this so much is it's just so easy to install. You just flex your tackle out on either side and you're in 10 personnel empty with an H back. And if they align to it really well and like say they get a linebacker out here and a safety over the top, linebacker out, safety over the top and have a fight. Are you drawing something? Sorry, can you not see me? No, can you do, can you bring it back up? Oh, you're screen? right. I got to do that. Sorry, <laughs> just get going, man. All right. So, can you guys see this? I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. Okay, pull cat stuff. So, flexing the tackles out, um, they're ineligible, obviously. Um, but if you get them to align um, incorrectly to this, like take the now screen. If they align correctly to it since no one's got their hand in the dirt, just bring guys back in into a normal formation. So I think this is one of those plays. It's uh, you know, Malzahn has like sugar huddle stuff. Um, it's just such an easy install. And you, I mean, when I talk, the reason I like subtitled the book um, unlocking hidden yardage is because there's so much of this hidden yardage all over the football field where it's just like, ah, oh, we're just a little bit misaligned. And now we've got a tackle running the alley on a safety and we just got 15 yards. And so it's little things like this where, like, once again, it costs you almost nothing to align in this formation. And then if they do a great job lining up to it, all right, like, let's just flex everybody back in and we can get in 10 personnel, 11 personnel, whatever we want. Um, but again, if they misalign to it, shoot, you got a now screen that's 15 yard gain. So it's, I think screens are, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, find easy wins for you. And it doesn't it doesn't take much. Get a little creative with the formation. We go go give them a quads look or a you know diamond look, um, and you can you can have some fun with it. Um, and again, stealing yards. Um, Coach, did you want to pause for some questions? Yeah, and let your uh, your tackles stand up as wide receivers. Of course, always they love yeah. that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Michael wants to know, he's talking about uh, shovel screens. I'm a huge shovel screen fan. And you yeah. previously, you posted something on your Twitter about Hawaii. And you're asking like, hey, why are only running shoot teams running the, sho uh, the shovel? Yeah. Did you find anybody else that ran the shovel? And why do you think it's underused? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think the m most people that run shovel like consistently are going to run like that Utah pass or like basically it's the like yeah. like you're running power read and you're going to shovel it to an H back so you can keep your running or quarterback out of a run scheme. Um, I again, this is me personally. I don't really think of that as a screen. I think of that as more like run game. The shovel screen, I think of as more of like a running back slip screen. So like if we're in slide protection and we, you know, send our running back out to block on the backside of slide protection, like if we're sliding right, he goes left and he just flips inside, opens up his hips and we, we shovel the ball to him. Um, the reason I like it so much is because it's, uh, it's really low risk. I think Alex Kirby was kind of laughing because um, I guess it was back when Texas lost to Alabama in the national championship. They actually had a shovel screen that was intercepted. And the uh, sideline reporter was like, man, what a high risk play call. Like, you know, you were getting tricky there. And in the reality, like 199 times out of 100 shovel screen, the worst thing that can happen is an incomplete pass. Yeah, You are rarely going to see that ball picked off. I've seen drop back screens picked off quite a bit um, or, you know, some of the throwback screens get picked off a lot. But shovel screen is pretty low risk. And so it's, you know, it's, it's a really easy way to run shovel screen, especially if you um, get in a lot of like, if you're doing a lot of six man protection, uh, it's just a really easy way to get cheap yards. And I think Hawaii actually kind of thought of it as like their, their version of the West coast draw. Like they weren't going to, you know, go back to pass and hand it off. They were going to, you know, be in the shotgun and shovel forward. So I don't know. I mean, I think, I think I love shovel screens. Um, and I think they're really, they can be really slick. I know 
back in the day, not maybe not back in the day, but a few years ago, Boise State was running it um, a good bit, running some shuffle screens and had a lot of success with it. And the nice thing is if you get people to drop out, you can really get away with releasing like one tackle. Um, so like you, you release a running back and a tackle and the tackle sets the point and the running back just scoots. So I think I think you can you can get away with some stuff on shovel screen that I really like. You don't have, it doesn't take nearly the setup as a, a true slip screen. No, it, and you're absolutely right. I I freaking love it. I ran it one time, scored a touchdown. I'm like a dumbass. Never ran it again. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's just There's too many other do. fun things to run, right, Coach? <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. We got some other questions and coaches. If you have any questions, put them in the chat and we will answer them. Uh. Coach Mountain Dog, I love YouTube usernames, man, because just Mountain Dog one thoughts yeah. on tunnel screens out of quads. Did you see a lot of quads passing game or screens in your breakdown? Yeah, oh yeah. And did you see any any tunnel screens? Absolutely. So great screen. Um, I don't think I'll be able to pull up film of it, but I have lots of film um, if you want to check it out. I think I don't know if the this quad screen is actually in the book, but it's definitely in the film library I, I included in there. Um, so it's basically a quads arrow screen to number four with a backside tunnel. So one of the cool things is, uh, as you progress in your ability to, um, kind of execute your screen game, you can get the, the levels of intensity can increase. And so one of the, my, one of my favorites is screen to screen. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to have a front side fast screen and a backside slow screen. Um, a lot of guys run it. I just have tried to like streamline the terminology a little bit of, um, you're calling it a, basically a double screen. Um, and the, the cool thing about those double screens is you can read it or you can call it. So like you can like treat the front side fast screen as like a, you know, we're going to just pump it, but we're really looking for the backside tunnel. Um, or you can say, let's read this thing. And if you have the front side fast screen, take it kind of like in another section of the book, I talk about pass screen options where you have quick game with a slow screen and, that's great too. Like, again, if you have the front side quick game, take it. If not, let's come back to the backside slow screen. The Patriots actually did it a lot with Y stick and running back slip screens. Sorry, I'm talking too fast. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> get excited about all this stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, tunnel screens out of quads is great, but I wouldn't run it to the quad side. I'd run it to the backside single receiver. So basically you get something to the quad side and then you come back, release a tackle guard and center point alley peel. And then you're up the, up the hash. For a touchdown hopefully heck yeah and speaking of why stick slow screen that was our best play this year it's incredible it's 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 unbelievable how defenses worry about that the stick concept and then they just forget about the running back and you just dump it to them and oh, yeah. off to the races man well and coach if you like why stick west virginia a few years ago was running a why stick swing screen where they would Run, they would throw a, a front side. It was basically a fast screen, but basically the quarterback would take the snap. The running back would release on a, on a swing screen and only number three or three would run a stick. So if the stick was there, he'd pump it in there. If not, if, if he wasn't immediately open, he would, tr the number three would turn around and block on swing screen. He would be the peel player. So oh they would goodness. run front side screen and then pump it into Y stick if it was there, which is brilliant. That's <laughs> Good forward. As a defensive coordinator, I would I would hate that. <laughs> be terrible. Oh, we got another one. Coach Birdwell wants to know what's your favorite running back screen for a team that never uses their back and pass bro. Hard yeah, to do sure. shovel and slip screens, and it may be a dead giveaway when your running back does nothing but swings all day. Absolutely, yeah. So um, here's this is where it gets kind of fun. Um, I actually really like the hook and ladder screens. Um, so where you throw like a slot now or tunnel screen to the field and then release the back and you just catch and flip it. Um, Joe Moorhead did, a, did he, I don't know if he did it a lot, but he did it a couple times when he was at Penn state. Um, I think that one's in the book. Let me check on the wall. Yeah. I think that one's in the book. Um, and <laughs> there's, there's just some like, again, it's, it seems like a really trick play, but it's really pretty simple. Um, and, and again, it's a way to get the ball in that guy's hands. I think, you know, running back swing screens, if you're trying to do it all game long, um, it obviously can get very repetitive, but one of the things that Clemson does to kind of mitigate that is they will run a swing screen to the field. So they will be like trips, right. And they'll run a swing screen. They maybe uh, will tear motion out of the backfield and they'll pump the swing screen to the field. But then what's going to end up happening is they're going to throw a slot tunnel um, underneath the running back. 
So again, you're getting all that action to the field and then you're, you're um, throwing the, the slot tunnel back in. I don't know if they had a ton of success with it, but it's a nice little play. I think again, swing screens can get really repetitive. Um, but what I would do more than anything is like run screens off of play action. Um, play action slip screens, I think are the most, one of the most devastating plays in, in football. Um, and you don't have to be under center to run it. Um, and I think there's ways that you can like run outside zone action and boot out of there and throw back the screen to the, to the running back, even out of gun. Uh, but I think if you're, if you run the football consistently and your running back gets it a lot, um, running play action, boot, any type of, any type of action like that, and then throwing back to the running back after you faked it to him that I've just seen that have so much success. And it's across a lot of different types of offenses, even, even some flex bone stuff when you get hard run action away and then you can pump that screen backside. I love that. And uh, JT, man, everybody loves <laughs> wild stick. Everybody does. I don't know what you're talking about. Dude. <laughs> okay. Love it. Love it. So uh, let's say, okay, we got one more. And uh, again, coaches, if you want to learn more about this, look in the description, there's links to both of his books. Um, I'm going to be honest, man, the, the counter book, when you came on and you did that, uh, that clinic for the um, score at will summit, the different types of blocks on counter, how you had <laughs> counter sweep. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Man, I, that just blew my mind. So that helped me so much. That I mean, it was, so it was a game changer right there. So coaches, if you haven't already go get both of them, they're down in the description <laughs> right there. Uh, I mean, we want the kids to learn and we don't learn. So that's crazy. Uh, what about offensive tackle screen? What, what is that? Coach? You need what it. What is that? Help me out. You I'm need stupid. it. So basically there's a couple I, ways. You never can do mind. It. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You need to, you need to get it, maybe get in an unbalanced set and run a little jet motion, work with it and throw back to the tackle. I think, uh, Matt Canada did it a lot at Pitt. They had a really athletic tackle on the backside. But again, you can get to it with hook and ladder too. Weber State did it this year where they threw the, the boundary tunnel and yeah. flipped it to the tackle and he scored. And I actually I posted that clip, man, a couple um, a couple months ago. And there was a guy playing in the spring who pulled it off a couple like at least once, maybe twice. Um, and he sent me the sent me the video. I was so fired up. Um, great way to get your big boys involved. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think having that stuff, again, one of the things that we talk about a lot in our program is like, we want to have on every call sheet, I want to have a couple morale plays. These don't necessarily have to be like, oh, we're going to score a touchdown as much as like, we're going to get somebody the ball that doesn't normally get it. And the team's going to get hype on the sideline. It's just going to get everybody back engaged. And so sometimes those morale plays are, if we're up by a lot or down by a lot, like we might just try to get a kid involved that it's going to, you're going to make boost the morale of the whole team. And I think if you can throw the ball to a big boy, that's a morale play right there. It's, it's rewarding somebody for doing the hard work all game long. So I'm a huge fan. Um, I, I love getting in, uh, you know, getting in some unbalanced sets and going tackle eligible and trying to sneak him out down the field on a little seam or something. But, uh, but the throwback screen is great too. I, I think I have a, a nice little throwback screen from Matt Canada in the book for sure. I wonder if he's, we're going to see that with the, uh, the Steelers. Oh, I, because uh, Brian O'Neill's at the, uh, he's at the, is he with the, the Steelers now? I think Canada is their offensive Canada's coordinator. There. That's right. That's right. Brian O'Neill is the guy that they threw it to all the time who was a tackle. I th actually think he's with the Vikings. I'd have to go back and check, but he, he was a freak athlete. He ran like a 4-8. Yeah. yeah those, freak athlete. Good. Those are. So, uh, we just saying Roche, Rochester, I can't, I'm Southern. I can't talk. <laughs> uh, did it to beat a rival on the fun play. That's got to be both demoralizing for the opponent <laughs> and just never going to top that for that. Oh, you'll never, tackle. you'll never beat that. That's incredible. But yeah, you got, you got, if you're going to run screen game, you got a man, you got to, uh, you got to run some t tackle screen for sure. And then here's coach Birdwell says tunnel away from the swing side has been a great look for us. Never looked at hook and ladder off of it. I like it. Yeah, it, it's really nice. Um, and, and McVeigh, I think ran like a, like a boundary now screen against the Packers in the playoffs on a two point play where they ran the hook and ladder. I don't have that in the book, but I think the film's in the library. Um, but yeah, there's, there's some really cool like hook and ladder stuff. And again, it's not as dangerous as everybody makes it seem like it's, if you practice it five or six times in pre-practice, you'll be good. You'll be good to go. Heck yeah. Well, Dan, I appreciate you being here, man. Of course, um, man. They can find you on what, what, what's better to get in contact. Is it Twitter? Cause you're, you've got 8,000, 
875,000 followers on Twitter, uh, 900,000 followers on Instagram. <laughs> Wait, how, how can they reach you if they want to, besides man. going to your website? And yeah, man, Twitter, Twitter and Instagram are usually best. I try to try to stay on top of those as best I can. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I love, love to hear from you guys. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me, you know, coach, I, I appreciate you having me on. I think the biggest thing for me is like, n- nothing makes my day. Like somebody, you know, getting use out of the, the stuff I'm, I'm studying. Like if you're installing it and your team is running it and you're finding success, like I would love to see videos or anything like that, whether it's counter or screen, uh, that, that makes my day. I've had some coaches over the spring that got to play after the counter book and showed me some clips of them running it. And it just like that, that means the world to me because it means that they're getting something out of it. Their, their guys are getting something out of it. They're having success. And um, that's really the goal of all this is to keep sharing information. I think football is the greatest game in the world. And, the more we can share information with each other and make each other better, uh, you know, the better off the game is in the future. So that's, that's my whole goal with all of this. Heck yeah. And to end it off on JT, tried the single receiver tunnel hook and ladder to guard play. Oh, there you go. Water receiver ran a fade sack. <laughs> oh, well, kicked him off the field. Terrible and terrible coaching too. I'm sure oh, that guy never got forgiven. hazed. Oh, he would never be forgiven. No, oh, my goodness. No. You <laughs> Well, uh, Dan, I thank you so much for being here. Yeah, Coaches, man. thank you so much as well. Before you go, hit that thumbs up button. And until next time, I will see y'all later. That should be.